So I blame Nick Sirianni, and I got so much blame for Nick Sirianni that I'm not even going to get to Jalen Hurts for a moment. Um, the first time we met Nick Sirianni, he was stumbling through a presser, and we hadn't even played a game of football yet. Now, we offered Nick Sirianni grace for that. We yeah. offered him some grace for stumbling through that presser. Mm. But it hasn't gotten worse. It hasn't gotten better. Mm. It's just gotten worse, rather. Mm. The mm. last six games, the Eagles have been down 30 to 7, 28 to 7, 15 to 6, 28 to 18, 27 to 7, and 17 to 3. If that's not bad enough, the Eagles lead the NFL in penalties with 58. That's on the coach. If that's not hmm. bad enough, Miles Sanders, who his first two years in the NFL went over 1,000 yards from scrimmage, including his rookie year when he went over 1,300 yards, Miles Sanders, 42nd in the National Football League prior to getting hurt in rush attempts per game. If that's not bad enough, uh. Nick Sirianni, who knew he was a first-year head coach, brought in Jonathan Gannon to be his defensive Gannon. coordinator. First-year defensive coordinator. Eagles, the worst in passing yards when it comes down to yards, talking about giving those up. So when I look at things, I blame Nick Sirianni because not only was Nick Sirianni and has Nick Sirianni been terrible, mm. but Nick Sirianni is going to bring in a defensive coordinator who was the DB coach in Indy with him and the last four losses. <laughs> Derek Carr, 91% completion percentage. Mm. Tom Brady, 81% completion percentage. Mm. Dak Prescott, 81% completion percentage. Patrick Mahomes, 80% completion percentage. Patrick Mahomes? So not even. <laughs> and not only has Sirianni been bad, mm. but the company that Sirianni decided to keep and bring with him over to Philadelphia has been bad. Dan Campbell has shown me more with his 0-7 Lions Damn. and Nick Sirianni has shown me with these 2-5 Eagles. <laughs> so before I can even get to Jalen Hurts, mm. I'm all focused on Nick Sirianni because this Nick Sirianni experiment has proven to be a failure. Woo! Smoke. I thought you were going to save me some ribs, but these bones are going to have to do because, boy, you done lit that dude up. And I'm here to resurrect that dude by pointing the finger at someone else. Please someone don't. who actually crosses the white Which line. Which finger? The broken one? Because <laughs> if you point that one to Jalen Hurts, it might get back to Nick Sirianni. <laughs> oh, were you a Criss Cross fan? Yeah, point your, point your pinky. Which one? Point my yeah, pinky. Point it that. is pointing, damn it. It's just going that way, like a, like a ghetto antenna. Just <laughs> you can get the finger. The middle. <laughs> Criss Cross. Um, here's the thing. It ain't about Nick Sirianni. I can't go there. I never could blame Coach. Like, I'm just from that place. I, I had a lot of friends who didn't make it to the league, didn't make it as far as they aspired because they used to blame Coach. <laughs> coach tripping. I, yeah, he tripping, all right. Yeah, he's starting me. He ain't starting you. Maybe because I'm better than you, fool. Coach ain't tripping. Coach looking at you like I'm putting you in position. Human chess pieces. Now play the damn game. Oh, who's playing the game between the white lines in this conversation? Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni. Damn, this hurts me because, you know, I love me some Jalen Hurts. Only thing I love more than Jalen Hurts is the truth, and I have to tell the truth. Um, Jalen Hurts has three straight games of below 60% completion percentage. Last time I checked, Coach ain't never told me to throw the ball in the dirt. Last time I checked, Coach ain't never say throw the ball off target. Last time I checked, Coach never told me to fumble the ball in the red zone going in for a score. But all those things have occurred. <clears throat> Hurts has three straight games of fewer than 240 passing yards. That's on coach. That's on the receivers and myself and in our connection and how far we're taking this football. He's had a passer rating of below 100 in five of the last six games. Uh-oh, that ain't on coach. And a giveaway in three straight games and four out of the last five. Acho! Your argument was the defense because of the opposing quarterbacks, how they lighten them up, right? I give you that because that has metrics behind it. I, facts, facts, facts. But then when you start talking about coach, we got to do some mental gymnastics a little bit. Well, his press conference led to a week six loss, and you're like, wait, wait, wait. Now we can't go do all that. Since somebody stutters, does not mean, or is flustered in the moment, does not mean that they're not ready to coach a football sure. team. So that to me is a little bit of the mental gymnastics. You talk about this defense, oh, I got stats to support that as well. But when we look at a quarterback, and it's not Jalen Hurts' fault, he's in a situation that is asking him to do something that he's not prepared for in this moment to do right now. We'll get to that in my second lap. But your passer rate is 22nd, your completion percentage is 29th. Come on, man. That's on coach. Nah. Well, it's not on Hurts. And here's why it's not on Hurts. So, okay. you know this. <clears throat> I do. You've told me this. What's that? Don't get in a relationship with somebody and then try to ask them to change. Oh, yeah. Hell no. Hell. When you get in a relationship <laughs> with somebody and you already know who they are, that's who they are. Mm. Jalen Hurts, mm. last year his completion percentage was 52. 
This year's up to 61. So even if you talk to me about as bad as his last three games were, it's still a higher completion percentage than last year. Last year, Jalen Hurts' passer rating was only 77. This year's passer rating is at 90, 89.5. Mm -hmm. The Eagles, you knew who Jalen Hurts was. Nick Sirianni, before you took the job, you knew who Jalen Hurts was. Mm -hmm. So don't now start complaining about a man who you already knew who he was before you chose to commit to that man. <laughs> but Nick Sirianni, on the other hand, we're trying to figure out who you are. Oh, good point. Here's my biggest problem good with the point. Eagles. My biggest, my biggest problem is this. You got the blind leading the blind. Mm. Nick Sirianni, mm. you're 40 years of age. So you're going to bring in and handpick your defensive coordinator, former defensive backs coach for the Colts. He's only 38 years of age. Well, Nick Sirianni, you're also going to handpick your offensive coordinator, Steichen. He's only 36 years of age. The youngest <laughs> trio of coaches, head coach OCDC in the National Football League. So you got the Eagles out here like this, like three blind mice. <laughs> because if I'm Nick Sirianni and I stumble into an issue, I can't lean on my DC like Sean McVay when he went to the Super Bowl with the Rams and he could lean on Wade Phillips. Mm. If I'm Nick Sirianni, I can't lean on my OC. Mm. We all figuring this out together. That's problematic. I'll give y'all a hint. Let's go. When I got uh, traded to the Eagles, Chip Kelly was there. I was like, how come all these coaches know each other? And somebody from the upper level of management told me this. They hired Chip Kelly, and they said, you can pick your coordinators, but they have to have coordinating and NFL experience. Sure. Because they didn't want a first-year head coach from him from college to go bring in some first-year OCs and some first-year DCs coming from college as well. They said, hey, you the head man. Pick who you want, but they're at least going to be some sort of stipulations for you to pick. Mm. The problem with Sirianni is he's in his first season with a DC in his first season with an OC who's only ever been an OC for one single year. To me, Jalen Hurst ain't pick his coaches. Uh. He ain't pick his family now. Mm. Nick Sirianni chose this. Nick Sirianni made this bad, and he made all the Eagles players late in it. You are on to some great, great Great stuff. You're in trouble, though. <laughs> I hate you. You know what's so funny? You ever, you ever just take a drive and think about this? I always think about this. Like, golly, I'm from L.A., and I went to school in New York, and that's my upbringing. Wow, that's amazing. And that's just good fortune to me. But I had nothing to do with that, and that's only a result of where my mama and daddy fell in love and said, hey, we're going to just get married right here, right? Like, it's just where you're born and what, what, what you're drafted into in terms of life is just where your parents were in love when they had you, right? Kind of random to me. It's just weird because it could just take your life in so many different places. I got other family members. I got a cousin from his parents are from Topeka, Kansas and uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Let's just say my cousin different, okay? My cousin a little different. I ain't mad at him. Here's the thing. Jalen Hurst, okay, I'm drafted to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Oh, an organization that um, has its ups and downs. Let's just talk about that. Especially a little bit of a quarterback carousel. Not Miami, but certainly a little bit of the northeastern version of Miami, right? If I would say that. Just can't figure it out. Coaches in, out. Quarterback in, out. Okay, we're here. Now, Jalen Hurts is good. Mark Sanchez and I agreed on by, about Jalen Hurts. There's a cap to the level of potential in Jalen Hurts. It just seems that way. With that said, he's not great enough to just be good in a situation where they're asking him to be good and great. He's around personnel that is like, look, dog, you good, but we need you to be great. But most quarterbacks that hit the ground running are going to successful situations, as Mark even told us. They're good, and the situation makes them look great. Defense, running game, whatever it may be. This is just the opposite, and it's affecting Jalen Hurts. But guess who else it's affecting? Nick Sirianni. He ain't draft all this. Nick Sirianni didn't build this team. If you want to go upstairs and take this problem and say the systemic issue that Philadelphia has their organization, let's talk. But if you're going to blame it on a coach who just took an opportunity that wasn't ideal but had to take his opportunity, I ain't hearing that. Here's why I'm going to blame it on him. Yesterday, no. Eagles are down 17-7 to at halftime. They fighting. First possession of the game, Eagles go out, get a touchdown. They look died. Raiders go down. They don't really score. Then the Raiders get up. Then the Raiders go up 17-7. It's halftime. Eagles, you in a game with a good Raiders team. Nick Sirianni, you're going to start the second half with oh. a surprise mm. onside kick. It worked in the it Super Bowl. It surprised nobody it but worked. you. It <laughs> the only people that got surprised by that onside kick was the Eagles. Because the Raiders recover it. Raiders go down and score. Now it's, it's game over. It's, it's 24-7. It's, it's game. It's you're game. not winning that on the road down 24-7. to When I look at it, I'm like, 
Those are the decisions from coaches that put your team in a position mm. to fail. Mm. Eagles went two consecutive weeks where they're getting touchdowns turned over because they're getting illegal offensive P.I. calls. That's coaching. 58 penalties. Ooh. That's coaching. A running back mm. that has 1,000-plus scrimmage yards two consecutive seasons but only gets 40 or 42nd in the NFL in touches through six Ooh. weeks. That's coaching. When I look at it, so many of the Eagles' fundamental flaws are coaching Ooh. Coaching, coaching. I'm going to talk about Howie Roseman later on in the show when oh. we do this block again. Oh. But for now. Okay, yeah, now we talking. It's just Nick Sirianni, big dog. Okay, good. I could take this loss right here because uh, Sirianni, let's just say you're not winning in reality. And according to Acho, it started off, you were losing in perception.